Right, 26 June 2021, and today I want to quickly go through one of the most unfortunate situations that has ever happened in Zimbabwe in the past year, and this is the demolition of houses at Melfort yesterday. So the reason why I say this is the most unfortunate situation is because Melfort is a ZANU-PF project. So it is a project that was started by ZANU-PF youths in Goromon South, and it was one of the best projects the, to the extent that people in the diaspora were now buying houses at Melfort. So it's very, very unfortunate but I want to go through what went wrong here and how this goes to the best or the bottom of the strategy of the government of Zimbabwe and also the strategy of Idim Nangagwa. So I want to explain to you that ZANU-PF, in my view, has done very, very well in formulating strategies. And what they did is that in July 2020, the Minister of Housing and uh, I think Social Housing and Rural Amenities, Mr. Daniel Garwe, and also the Deputy uh, Yokai Simbanegami, they called all the rural district councils, they called the financial institutions, and they had a meeting where they communicated the national housing strategy of Zimbabwe and how it was linked to their goals, which were set by the president, Idim Nangawa, for 2030. And I have linked this strategy session, it was about two hours, where they explained how housing was going to change in Zimbabwe. And I was very, very impressed with the, the strategy that they formulated. One of the key uh, components of that strategy was to decongest the cities and to move people to the rural district councils where they would have development. And the minister at that time, uh, Garwe, he compared the UK where most people are living in counties instead of the situation in Zimbabwe where everyone lives in the cities. So he formulated many, many strategies and showed how this could work. And so that strategy was formulated and Zimbabwe, as we speak, has one of the best strategies, housing strategies. If you go and watch that presentation, Zimbabwe is one of the best strategies, housing strategies. But what has been happening is that ZANU-PF, as usual, they are failing in one place, and that is in implementation. So you remember Tinashe Jonas was here last year, and he explained that Idim Nangagwa has got the right strategies. The problem is we lack a Ministry of Performance Evaluation. So this is a classic case where ZANPF has an excellent strategy, but they failed to implement it. And the end result is what happened at Melfort. According to my sources on the ground, 20 beautiful houses were crushed yesterday. They were brought to the ground. And I want to show you the kind of house that the youths had built. If you look at this house here, this is a beautiful house that was built by young people. And after it was crushed, it looked like this, similar to this. This is not the same house. You can see, I'm not saying this is the same house, but whoever had constructed these houses had done a good job. However, to make the situation worse, the Deputy Minister in the, minister, uh, in the Ministry of Housing or Social Housing and Raw Amenities, Yokai Simbanegal, had gone to this project and she had launched the project. So there is a disconnect and I'm going to show you 
where the disconnect is. But let's see the demolition. I want you to see the woman crying there when the house was being crushed. <laughs> Right, so you saw the pain and the crying that was happening there. My source on the ground said they stopped after 20 houses. I will show you a quick snippet of the minister speaking and what was the original plan. Remember what I said, Zanu PF is the best national housing strategy of any strategy they have had. I'm going to play you a snippet. This is not by accident what is happening. The minister, uh, Daniel Gagwe, he said, in August last year, that they are going to be very brutal about removing informal settlements. So if you've got time, you, you're gonna go and watch that at Gampaku Media. So there is a deliberate strategy to change the way houses look in Zimbabwe. But the problem is there's a disconnect and I'll show you the disconnect. And this is going to derail the ZANU-PF campaign strategy because ZANU-PF's campaign is based on making sure that people have got housing. That is the, the best or the foundation of ZANU-PF's uh, campaign in, in 2023. 20, and then in 2030, when we would push for national strategy one, these are the foundations. We want people to move so that when you're driving in Zimbabwe, you are in a developed country. But what is happening here, as I said, lack of implementation of the strategy and the gap is not in the ministry of social housing and, and um, uh, raw amenities. The gap is at a level of performance evaluation. When things are happening, there's a gap there. So let's go to what the minister said when she visited the site. She did not, the minister did not start the project. The project was already there in Goromons. There are 5,000 stands. There were 3,000 stands in Rua the previous week, which were handed to, to, the, to the banks. So there, there's a, a building society there which was given these houses. And this particular project, it was supposed to be run under NASA. So let's look quickly at what the minister said. This is a, a bit of a long video. It's about five minutes. So let's watch what he's going to say. You're also going to see all the key players. Who are the key players at Melfort? Those are Kamushiwona is who teach it. Musa Timava Kadzi Mbazi Enyu Kadzi Rai Mikwakwa Andi Mokona Eriku Kadzi Rai Mikwakwa Enyu Iva ino uro ongwa huku waka shumbus Iva ino uro ongwa huku tika natika waka pano magetse edu Saka shwa tine ngeti chida mayuthi are serious Muno nizu waka wa makomrez Mayuthi are serious Anoti kana muna hati Afu nga kuti ininda waku daku inda kumuja ka stand Asu kucha ka stand ye kuti Ati kana ango iwana oto ti chef bosha ya ano mudine stand ya dawana amdugu imani saka na aga namjungu ane phone imino kona kupa phone imbiri. That's why tiri kuti susu se national housing tino dama programs e kuti muchi muchi tenga ma stand zeni muchi baja pashoma ne pashoma muchi sano futi kudi nje kuwaka kana tawa kuti tino ita chini ichi chochi chana moyo wakadi ni. Ne moyo wese kuti kana wana ra boys mane gayu ya kuzofunza na wamuna ngagba kuti kosha ya ya shei shema kanga mchita pa groundi paya inindo shita na ngura oni nzere ya kadi ni kwete kuti jigo so buda shita se kuti time kwa shedu ma yuti shedu ya kanga shima masowe pana zita ande tuwa bosha tonderai I'm the National Secretary for Indigenization and Economic Empowerment in the Zanupia Field League aruta wa rapano nstara angu nironzi roja sporti Kupati in the Secretary of Education, National and East Youth League, 
ari kuruboshwe kwangu anonzi regai cheuka ku party the secretary wa economic affairs ku youth league ku national and east ari kurujike kwangu anonzi atachidene the political eh, commissar ku party pa district level ku east view mamira takaita pana tongoratidza kuti chini cha china unjire nekuti ari kuruboshwe kwangu anobva nechekuru warua eben Henry Pano ndino kuda neche muno mme Fort kusanganisira we ku East Field zvichireva kuti taka pane BOP pakuita kwedu business pano ine ndutara pano ku business dini ndino tunga mirira kana kuti ndini CEO we East Wind and Vintage Company isusu tiri kushanda eh tichitedzera ma regulations a eh, minister of eh, national housing and social amenities tiri papo pano panzvimbo iri pano ma beneficiary ma beneficiaries edu anosanganisira wo veterans youth civil servants disabled and disadvantaged e pano takamira se vintage and east wind trust e yakabuda mu youth league yes anu pf ine ndiri kutara pano ndiri mumwe wa youth league Ditori nengo ya province ya youth league so zviri kuitwa pano tuda kuratidza nyika kuti isu sevana ma president ed munangagwa tine njere kuonesa kuda kuendesa nyika mberi president pavari kuti vision 2030 takachibata ndo chatoda kuendesa mberi tine hurongwa kuti pa nzimbo ya muri kuona hi pacha drill wa ma bo acha kwanza nga chi supply mvura vagari vese vachange vachigara pana tine hurongwa hwekuti mabhoza auye nekukasika nekuti murikuona kuti development yatotanga vanhu atotanga kuti vaka saka pango vadiki diki iri kutera tinenge tatanga kudzvila mabhoza dzimba dziri kuvakwa pana apa dzimba dziri kuvakwa dziri pa plan my name is Yvette Munduna representing Moonline tange nyika uh, developing uh, with me here is my co-worker is the managing director of the company and uh, we have started uh, the pro- uh, with uh, the youth the project in uh, about two months ago and se zva murungo ona taisa ma roads in two months takwanisa kuti ma roads haitwe and uh, in less than six months taisa kukwanisa kuti ma roads edu aisko gravel tichendira mberi kuisa umasuwa tichita o ma magetsi tichatanga kuisa ma mapampu anoita kuti tichikwanise kuisa ma balls eo emvura tichimirirao council kuti atizive kuti time yawo inotora zvakadi tichingova mirira kuti ma youth edu akwanise kuona mvura taro ini ndinonzi Elliot Mkuze i am an urban planner mazha ma youth ekugurumunza akandi deedza kuti tibatsirane ku plana nzvimbo ine saka takai plan low density scheme to medium eh takai plana zvakanaka ine everything ma schools haripo ma church ma grade ma, ma amenities also anoita kuti vanhu vagare zvakanaka zviripo zvisita kazvi plana zviripo saka nanga ngoti nchoti ndo kushanda kwa takaita ni mayuti kusvika pa ne zvamuru kuona nhasi kuti zvosvika upana ya yeah, project edu ine ma phase matatu this one phase one yacho ine about 1100 stands 600 nekuma 800 square meters then toita ino kuti phase B iri across mutare road uko ine ma stands about 500 ari ma around 600 square meters because that phase C iri uko kusaidi the east the, the, the western side of patapinda naba right so i think if you did not know what melfort was now you understand this this program or this development was envisaged by the youths in zanu pf and it was well planned they had done a good job there in, in marshall east however the problem came in whether they had permission to be where they were and the minister if you can see from what the minister is saying they did not have the permission to be where they are however that is not a problem because uh sorry i said minister it's deputy minister so that is yokai simanega however if you look at the minister who is daniel garwe he had said 
the strategy was to allow this for people to, to go to the RTCs and build houses. They must be order, the houses must look good, and they must have services. Then Deputy Minister Yokai allowed, or she allowed them to build. You could hear her, she said, if, if you, as you are paying for your stand, you must also be building. So the young people, the disabled civil servants, they had permission to build. But then she said, at the same time, they must be servicing, they must be putting in place the services. And then that was August 2020. Now we are in June. That means approximately eight months later, they ended up destroying the house. Who destroyed the houses? Who gave them permission to destroy the houses? Whose land was it? And what was the role of NASA? These stands, the original people who were there and the houses that were uh, destroyed or demolished yesterday, is it the same people? So those questions arise. And I think that also goes to the issue of um, Goromon's Road Council. Where do they take the instructions? Can the council destroy houses without the permission of central government? And I think the answer is very simple. To me, the party comes before the government. So if you come here to South Africa, the ANC makes the policy at their party conference. And then the people who are deployed to government, they implement the policies of the party. However, what is happening in Zimbabwe is ZANU-PF is sort of like allowing councils and cities and mayors to make decisions, whereas it should be the opposite. The, the party should be in control. So if something is about to happen in Goromonzi, the person who should make the decision should be sitting at ZANU-PF offices. If you are, you are in charge of the situation, it should not happen that Gormons Road Council makes a decision that conflicts with the government and they come out on top. The person that should come out on top is the party. So the directive to say, don't destroy these houses should come from the party. And in this particular case, this looks bad for the party because the party had allowed people to start this construction. And I, I want to keep this very, very short. So let me go to my recommendations of what should happen in these particular situations. Then I want to quickly play the snippet where the minister is saying that the, this is a deliberate strategy. So my recommendation is this. <coughs> Firstly, the, the, the ZANU-PF should take this very, very seriously. ZANU-PF should put in place a proper committee to manage land in Zimbabwe. We should know where all land is for residential, business, and other purposes. We should know where the urban area ends and the peri-urban areas end. And then they should monitor what happens to land. So let me give you an example of the current demolitions. If you demolish structures in Mbari and you say there should be no building, if I come after one year, I mustn't find people building there again. I mustn't find today, if I go back, I find people selling on the same spot. So what should happen? The government of Zimbabwe should go and buy a fence, a strong fence, uh, like the, the ones that they use here in South Africa, in Mozambique. Fence off all those areas where they don't want people. And they say, this is private land, or you can't go in here. Then you must have a monitoring and evaluation committee which says in Melfort, we've got 5,000 stands. Who is supposed to get those stands? How many have been uh, received? And also, we went in August last year and said we must service. Where are we now? So this committee should be looking at land. How is land being used in Harare? And if you want your city to look beautiful, make sure that when you crash places, then they look beautiful after. At the moment, it's not looking good. After you finish the demolition, it's not looking good. 
Then the second thing is who is responsible for, for servicing, for providing services. And obviously it is the government because you are in peri-urban areas. You are now talking about government land. It's no longer council land. Government through the rural district councils should appoint service providers to service land. Not the current situation where you say the, the cooperative or the developer. These developers, you saw them, they were wearing ZANPF regalia. They're hiding behind ZANPF. They are not proper developers. The, the company is to wins because it's coming from ZANPF. Then that's fine because we are obviously the part which is ruling. And if, if your, your youths decide to start a project, they can start a project. But the developer must be a professional. It must not be a person from the party. Because the moment you, you put a person from the party, they won't service. So you saw what happened here. They said there's going to be boreholes. There's going to be sewage. There's going to be tarring of roads and gravel. All this was not there. By the time they crashed, these houses were sitting in the bush. There was no electricity. There was nothing there. There was no, no sewage system. And the houses had plans, but the plans had not been approved at council. So the two things that are needed is a committee at ZANU-PF that is going to monitor and evaluate progress and the appointment of proper developers. So the government must control the developer, the developer centrally to say, if we say in Goromons there are these things, the water, the sewer, the, the, the roads, this is done by contractors and the contractors should be paid by central government. So that is my recommendation here. And then I want to quickly look at um, Minister Daniel uh, Garway, what he was saying. And, and I, I want to do this very, very quickly before I close. Because as you know, the, the situation here in South Africa is getting worse. And yesterday we had 18,000 new infections here in Johannesburg with 11,000 in Houteng. It's likely that next week we are going to see a closure of the borders. From what I'm hearing, I, I saw the ICTA was live a few minutes ago. There is likely to be a closure of many, many things, which I don't want to talk about. Otherwise, I'll get sued. So let's, uh, you can see the Minister Yokai Simanegami. They launched this strategy. You can go to gambaku.com you will see this. I was very impressed at the time. And I say, if some people have implemented this, they're going to win. So let us play this on 27 minutes. I want to put a pause on this and see if I can go to 27 minutes. All right. Okay. I want to stop sharing. Start again. Right, so forgive me here. Um, let's see what he was saying. And cooperate with the Minister of, Local, Minister of National Housing, Mr. Swamedi, when we come to regularize those areas. We are not going to be kicking people in any direction. We're not going to do that. We want to work as a collective. Yourselves and us, this government, let's work together to provide decent accommodation for desperate home seekers to provide decent accommodation that speaks to Vision 2030, to provide social amenities, which is in terms of schools, clinics, hospitals, to, to Zimbabweans. We are aware of Zimbabweans who are now farmers, who are settled into the bush, tracts, vast tracts of land which white commercial farmers were keeping. They need services there as well. We have a program that we're going to be launching as well of providing septic tanks and soaker waste in the rural communities. We can't speak to Vision 2030 if people are still using that old technology of an open world and a pit latrine. It, it will not work. Whether you are in the urban areas or in the rural areas, it's now it's outdated. We want to provide septic the technology where septic tanks and soaker waste are key. I'm happy to, to advise you that DDF is already on the ground. 
they are drilling bores, a lot of bores throughout the country. So the water will be there for us to flush our systems in the houses. We also need you to educate our traditional leaders so that they educate the citizens in the need to move away, to migrate now from big latrines and wells to septic tanks and soak away in their areas of residence. We are also discouraging profusely the continued cutting of trees and building houses. The poor and jagged technology is outdated now. If it right, so I just showed you a snippet. This is a two hour video where the Minister of Social Housing and Raw Amenities was speaking. There is a big disconnect between what the strategy says and what is happening on the ground. So if you look at what I said in the beginning, ZANU PF very, very good at formulating strategies. This is a, a world-class strategy. I don't know who came up with it. I won't be surprised if this was an international organization that developed this strategy. Everything is in place. The problem comes on implementation. How do you implement this strategy? How do you get rid of informal settlements without destroying people's houses and with a progress which, which is visible to say we started here and then after one year, this is where we are and in the long run, this is where we're going. And this is what ended up causing the problem that you saw at Melfort. Everything was in place, but the monitoring, the evaluation, the leadership on the project was lacking. And this will continue to happen until there is a community in Zanu PF that oversees this kind of, uh, of developments, not only in Harare, but in all areas. So across the country, there should be a central supervision of what happens with projects. And in this particular case, I'm very, very sad to say this house is being crushed because this to me was one of the best projects that the Zanpio youths, youths had came up with. And it's unfortunate, I don't know how long it's going to, to go if they've stopped or not. I understand they only crashed 20 houses. So let's hope they, 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 they get this together and they get people to properly take this project forward, going forward, so that people don't keep on losing their houses, especially in the peri urban areas. There's no reason to, to crash someone's house in Goromons where there's nothing. This is actually development that they're bringing there. Just make sure that they do it right. Make sure that the ministers, they don't go to a place in July and then in June, someone comes and crashes your house. And also, once you say this place must not be built, don't come back a year later and everything is back where it was. I want to quickly look at these comments here. I like to quickly look at these comments. Sydney Isaac, as even they don't learn, in Zim Zanpiovia Gara, Inoj Gamari Zivan, selling legal stains to aspected people. I don't think it's Zanpiov, I think it's a few individuals. So this is why I'm saying there needs to be a committee in Zanpiov. The, the party should lead government. So the decision should be made at party level, and then in government, the people who are deployed should implement so that. If the party says stop doing what they're doing, they stop. Then let's look at, he's saying, are those the land barons? I hope these guys didn't start selling stands. This is what he's talking about. If you look at the guys here, um, who, who are actually developing this project, these guys here. So I don't know if these guys then moved away from the original mandate and started selling stands. I want to show you something here. And if you, if you go here on, online, there is a, a group here for diasporans. It's called Z, zbinworld.com. And I hope that you are, you are seeing this. Let, let me get rid of that picture. And, and then let's see what I'm deflecting, I'm showing there. So if you look at that house, it's one of the houses at Melfort, according to an advert to the diaspora. So I hope these guys were not 
now selling stands to the diaspora. Also, the developers, how were they getting paid? How did they get money for the development? So those are key questions, which I say can only be resolved. If you have a proper tender, you need to have a tendering system where a person that is supposed to develop these areas actually is a professional, not someone from the party. Then let's look at, um, let me look at Mpo, Mafum Jov. You're saying project from Guy Blawai Road from 1993, only 10 kilometers have been done. I've heard about this road for a very, very long time. And I think this also goes to the issue of DDF. You heard the minister there talking about DDF. Is DDF on the ground? Is DDF fixing roads? Is DDF um, drilling balls? Those are key questions. And that, that is where the disconnect is. ZANPF has excellent strategies and they can do very, very well if they start to monitor and evaluate them and say, this project that will say we're going to do, where are we and in which region? Because maybe something's not going right. Let's go to Sydney Isaac. Gambo is all about town planning. The ZANU PF government doesn't have any idea of town planning. That's where the problem is. In this particular case of Melport, the planning was done by an independent town planner. So that is not the problem. The problem is the government allowed the project, the, the party allowed the, the project to come up. And then they were overpowered by someone to end up demolishing houses. The party should be, it should be impossible to demolish a house where a party like Zanpiov has said a project is going to be. Zanpiov should just say no. If Zanpiov says no, nothing should happen to that project because Zanpiov is the one that is in office. And as I said, in most countries, the ruling party makes the decision, sets the policy, and then the government implements. In this particular case, it seems like someone else is implementing. It's not the, the, the party that is implementing. And then uh, Manasa says, it's better I don't use earphones. I like to use earphones because I don't want to hear myself. One-on-one, -on -one, who is the senator for the areas mentioned and what district of Marshallland East is it? So <clears throat> is Marshallland, it's Goromon's South. So you may Google who is the, the MP there and the senators. But I, those guys didn't feature. You saw that the minister was here, is the minister of social housing and raw amenities. And there was no one here from council, from Gromond's Raw District Council. So there were some key stakeholders who were missing here. And also, if you look at NASA, I did not see the people from NASA here because these houses were funded. Some of this construction was funded. I'm not sure who, who was here, why the deputy minister was here, and why some key stakeholders weren't there. There was also talk of more, more, more building societies coming up, like NBS uh, coming here, the, the building society to fund some of these projects here. Because if you give this land to a building society, or if you give it to NASA, then what will happen is they'll run it professionally, but your, your party members will not get stands. So we need to balance. If there's a project, we could probably talk to, to NASA and say, okay, give us 100 stands for our members. So at the moment, we had 5,000 stands, but there was no professional company managing all this. The problem is at the level of strategy implementation, monitoring and evaluation, and making sure that things happen as they're supposed to happen. In Zimbabwe, there are companies that have been servicing stands for people for the past five years. People have not moved into the, the, the stands that they've bought. I'm sure the same situation is arising as you go to the, the new city of Mount Amden. There are a lot of people who have been given land there and they are not servicing it in time. They're not putting the services that are required. They're not putting the international standards of a new city. Those are the kind of gaps strategic implementation gaps that are there in, in this land situation in Harare, especially. Uh, David Moisek, stop protecting ZANU. 
uh, I think Zan, you, you need to understand how governance works. And the problem is most guys in Zimbabwe, they're very theoretical. If you, are, you know the developed countries, especially South Africa, the party is firmly in control and the, gov the government is, is just implementing the policies of the, of the party. Okay. I think the Zuru Samtok is saying, Inga, we are doing a project of stands. We are not doing stands. We are doing a mixed use development. So we are delivering a complete fi finished product only to members. So we, we are not going to sell anything. You will never see us. You will never hear us. So imagine how long it is that you heard me talking about a stand or a house or anything. So it's got nothing to do with anyone. You will not see us canvassing to anybody to say we're selling anything. It's a, an individual, private things. Then I want to end with Isaac. What strategy are you talking about, Gambapwe, where people are losing their livelihood? That's a lot of money lost. Them demolished houses. A strategy is not about one house. This is a national housing strategy. ZANPF is a great national housing strategy as described by the minister, Daniel Gambo. You can go to gambapwe.com. You will click there on the story. You will see at the bottom, I put a link there where you can listen to him for two hours. So I think I've covered a lot here. And as I said, very, very good strategy by ZANU PF on national housing. Good implementation by the Youth League. The, the guys in the Youth League, they did a good job. They had a good, a good plan for stands, for shops, for schools, everything. Somewhere at the end, someone was overpowered. The party was overpowered. And someone managed to destroy these houses because they did not understand that the party is the final say. If the party implements something, no one should be able to come and remove it because the party is in charge of everything, not only just talking. The, the party does, just doesn't talk. They implement. If the, the youth, youth league in Marshallland is funds, San PF head office, and they say someone is crushing our houses, some people should be able to come and say, no, this is a project that we put in place. You cannot do that, no matter which party you come from, because the party is in charge. They, implement, they, they develop policies, and the people that are in the councils and in government, they implement. Even people that are in rural these councils, they just implement what is developed at party level. Isaac, you disagree with me. I think we should have a discussion on this sometime. But to me, as I'm saying, uh, national housing strategy, fantastic implementation, poor, and performance management, very, very poor. I've talked for a long, long time, longer than I thought, because this is a very, very difficult topic. Uh, someone right now is lost. I can say probably no less than this house that they, they, they crashed you on looking here. No less than $50,000. Multiply that by 20, we're getting into a million dollars. Multiply that by the time, labor, materials. It's, it's very, very sad. And I think the party should get on top of this situation and avoid this happening again. Thank you very much. And I'll be back again tomorrow or Monday so that we can continue with other topics. Thank you very much and good night. <laughs>